soon enough we may be seeing Denis Siplinkov compete at the AMC tournament. Hello I'm wrestling fans in this video we will talk about Denis showing interest in the AMC event. Photos of young Sasho Andreev. He has always been a genetic freak. Devon Lerit vs Babkin. David Dadikyan vs Todd Hutchings. There's a confusion going on between these two. And then the highlights of the recent interview on Arm Olymp channel including East vs West 11 predictions by Denis Siplenkov. After that we have RVJ vs Hermes Gasparini. Is RVJ starting a new beef here? And finally Vitaly Lalitin vs Zaur Pezulayev practice. So let's start. While holding the AMC title belt Denis Siplenkov said I hope to compete in a tournament someday and have a belt just like that. Now we all know that Denis Siplenkov has not been a big fan of the tournament format of arm wrestling. He prefers super matches more even though he always dominated the tournaments as well. If you remember watching my words next for Denis Siplenkov video after Devon Lerit's loss, I talked about Denis potentially competing at the AMC tournament. Well not potentially, I said that he should compete there. It's going to be good for him to get back in shape, get back in serious arm wrestling competition mode. There were two major threats at the AMC for Denis. Number one, Zaur Paizulayev. As we have seen in the practice pool, even after winning the AMC tournament, the very next day, Zaur was able to pin Denis Siplenkov three times back to back without any rest. So it's fair to say that that day Zaur could have pinned Dennis maybe six times if it was a legit super match because in a super match you get multiple minutes of rest between every single round. But Dennis was not in a good arm wrestling shape back then. Right now he is much stronger and Zaur is probably weaker than what he was. So maybe Dennis already beats Zaur Pazulayev and he is the favorite to win this tournament and get $21,000 cash. Why is he the favorite? Can't Vitaly beat him? Well of course I believe Vitaly will beat Denis Siplenkov but he just won't be competing there and that eliminates the second danger called Vitaly Laletin because Vitaly has signed a contract with Engin Terzi for competing at East vs West exclusively. So I think Denis should compete. Will he compete? I'm not sure because he's going to compete in May or April either at King of the Table or East vs West. We don't know that for sure till now but for sure he is going to compete and after that possibly a hip replacement surgery. We're going to talk about the injury update in a few minutes in this video. So young Sasho Andrev, I found these photos on Reddit and he was always massive and muscular. God didn't bless him with height genetics but look at his forearm man. People say that Sasho is juiced. He's competing in a drug tested event and he's getting tested but people still say that WAF athletes also do find a way to cheat around the drug test but this is a 17 year old boy and look at the definition of his arms. That explains why in today's world he's probably pound for pound the most dominant arm wrestler in the world at least on the right arm. Devon Lerit vs Babkin. So Leonidas Arcona recently uploaded a vlog video from the King of the Table 9 event and in that event it was seen that Babkin was standing by the side of the table and he called Devon Lerit out. He was saying why did you chicken out of the fight? Why won't you fight me? And Devon told Babkin to shut up and many people are once again as expected going against Babkin. Just go to your mafia shit somewhere else. No, shut up. <laughs> Scariest cat always misses loudest Go. in the graveyard. Is he trying to stir the pot too much here? Was the topic already dead and Babkin should have stayed silent? Yes, I think he should have. But if we reverse the situations, let's imagine Babkin called out Devon Lerret for a MMA match. Devon accepted and after that Babkin backed out of the match after multiple times being called out by Devon Lerret. Then people would have destroyed Babkin. But since Devon is in the same situation now, nobody is really talking about it. Do I want to see a fight between these two? Well, not. Maybe not. David Dadikyan vs Uncle Todd. There is clearly a confusion going on between these two regarding the weights they are using. So David Dadikyan did some wrist curled pull up holds. I cannot really call them pull ups because he was moving less than maybe 40-50 degrees. But that is still impressive to do that with 75 kilos. And Uncle Todd, I think 
Todd that those plates were 20 kilos, not 25. So Uncle Todd selected 61 kilos precisely to do that exercise with. And that kind of shows that he was assuming that Dadi Kyan's plates were 20 kilos. So the weight that he was using was not 75, but 60 kilos. But that wasn't the case. But Todd Hutchings did multiple full range reps with 61 kilos at 57 years of age. That is really impressive. That's why Dadi Kyan was saying that he's a grandfather who is 60 years old and he's doing that with 75 kilos. So Dadi Kyan thought that Todd Hutchings is using 25 kilo plates when in fact those were 20 kilo plates. So there is a big confusion going on. Dadi Kyan is kind of overestimating what Todd Hutchings was doing and Todd Hutchings is underestimating what Dadi Kyan was doing. So that's why Dadi Kyan said now he will do the same exercise with 100 kilos. In the same interview, Babkan said that he did not really like it the way Alijan Muratov and Prudnik was talking about your left-handed match against Morozov and Prudnik as well. So initially Babkan got angry about that, kind of mad, and then Dadi Kyan just started. He said that Prudnik and Alijan, these are just ordinary athletes and people shouldn't be trying to make them some kind of superstars of arm wrestling. And he can probably beat both of them. Prudnik just got lucky because Dadi Kyan was one millimeter away from the victory on the left arm and then he got injured, otherwise he would have beaten him. Denis Siplenkov gave a bunch of injury updates and then he predicted East versus West 11 matches. He said that his hip kind of pulls out of its joint but there is no pain. Maybe no hip replacement surgery will be needed. He's kind of hopeful. He wants to talk about the positive things. But he has gotten some medication from the doctors, some injections in his knee. If the medication works, then he'll see and he will not go for the surgery. But if it doesn't reduce the pain that he sometimes has, or the pulling movement of the hip joint, then he is going to go for the hip replacement surgery for sure. But in both cases, he is going to compete in May. He has been doing some rehab workout, light weights. He's kind of staying in shape at his home. And as far as the predictions, Oleg Petrenko versus Barboza. Dennis thinks that Petrenko is going to win. Paul Lin versus Irakli Zerakashvili. Dennis recognized Paul after probably two minutes of conversation and then he predicted Irakli to win. Matt versus Wagner. Wagner is going to win with a flop press. Zurab versus Artem Tainov. Artem Tainov's left is kind of unstoppable. Mindaugas Tersitis versus Daniel. Daniel fights with a lot of confidence. He is going to win. Alijan versus Prudnik. Most interesting match. 50 50 is what Denis Siplenkov said. John versus Krasi. Top roll or hook. If Krasi is able to set the hook, he's going to win. If John is able to set the top roll, he's going to win. So I think we can call it a 50-50. Ivan versus Reno. Ivan's left is on another level. Ivan is going to win. Alex Kordecha versus Artyom Morozov. Morozov is going to win. This is what he was saying. But then he heard that Alex Kordecha is weighing nearly 170 kilos. And then Dennis was almost ready to change his prediction. He said that Alex Kordecha is also really strong. So we are going to call that one 50-50 as well. Todd Hutchings versus Dadi Kyan. Dennis Siplenkov was impressed a lot with what Todd Hutchings did against Ongarbayev. And he said that it's going to be a really, really tough match for Dadi Kyan. So he didn't really say who is going to win. But by the way, he was talking about it. I think it's fair to say that Dennis is favoring Todd Hutchings in that match. RVJ versus Hermes Gasparini. In one of Rob's videos, he kind of called out Hermes Gasparini. He said that he doesn't really like the way Hermes behaves or he just doesn't really like him too much as a person. Just to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of Hermes. Something about him just really gets under my fucking skin. To this, a subscriber and a viewer on his channel replied that what problem could he possibly have with such an amazing guy like Hermes Gasparini? Rob replied, it could be on me. It's his presentation of self and the fact he's a raging juicer and his accolades are on the end of a needle. So Rob is saying that everything that Hermes is doing, or at least most of it, is because of steroids. And he tries to flex on guys and talk about quality. So clearly Rob is not a fan, but sometimes he can also get called out for his selective criticism of steroid usage. He wouldn't talk about Devon Lerett in the same manner. He wouldn't talk about Dave Chafe in the same manner or some other North American arm wrestlers. But if we talk about Denis Siplenkov, Hermes Gasparini, Rob just starts firing shots at them. So yeah, the user rightfully replied that blame the game, not the user. 
there should be some strict repercussions for using steroids but currently there are none so that's why i think it's kind of a fair game vitali lalitin and zaur pezulai were practicing on the left arm recently we saw how zaur was kind of dominating a tired georgi swetkov on the left arm and georgi and devon were almost like 1921 they were that close obviously devon kind of dominated towards the end but that kind of shows vitali lalitin's level that he can absolutely flash pin and control almost everyone on the practice table and on the actual arm wrestling table whenever he wants and whenever he has to that's a different level left arm i think only maybe alex kordechek can do something against vitali so that's it for this video thanks for watching like the video and subscribe